for the honourable member for Bendigo. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And I rise to speak in favour of, of the amendments that have been moved to this bill for several reasons. Um, this bill fails to do, without the amendments, what the government is intending to do. Uh, it is simply an more red tape that is not only opposed by people in this House, it is also opposed by industry organisations. It is opposed by employer groups. Yes, it is opposed by unions those hard-working unions that the previous member said that he was here to stand up for. So let's just for a moment reflect on what the previous member said in this House. Uh, he see, suggested very early on that um, by interjecting and calling this bill red tape that I was engaging in thuggery, Deputy Speaker, bringing thuggery into this place, that I was being intimidating, Deputy Th Speaker. The previous speaker also said that, um, you know, it's like alcoholism and um, being like an alcoholic. I can't see the problem that um, is going on and that uh, the values of union officials are being corrupted, corrupted because of what's going on in the union movement. Deputy Speaker, I've never in my life been called a thug. Never in my life been called a thug. I've never in my life suggested that I'm intimidating. When I was actively involved in the union, representing some of our hardest working, lowest paid workers cleaners, when I worked and talked about industry reform, I was never referred to as a thug, a union thug, that term the government likes to throw around, whether it be in question time, whether it be up in the federation chamber on every individual member who gets up to speak on this issue from the government. Who you say this bill is supposed to support, the good union officials, well, you're actually also in your same speech and comments calling them union thugs. So what is it? You can't have it both ways. So the previous speaker and government speakers say that union members should get behind this bill and support it because they believe it is good governance. It is not. It is purely and simply a way in which to attack the union movement and those involved in the union movement. This bill and what it will do has been opposed by employer organisations time and time again, but yet the government brings forward this bill again to this House in this last sitting week before the session. And why? It is purely and simply politically motivated. It is not good government. It is not about um, ensuring that we have safer workplaces. It is not about, as the government tries to suggest, supporting good union officials. Because let's just look at who they have attacked in this place. I just don't know who they mean by these good union officials because they continue to attack every single union that has ever stood up to represent their members. So this government in this place and the other place have attacked childcare workers. They have attacked United Voice for daring to say that we should have a national quality framework. Whether it be in question time or through the committee process, they have attacked United Voice and childcare workers for daring to say that they should have professional pay and respect for the skills, for daring to say that there should be ratios in our childcare centres to ensure that we have a safe ratio of children to educators. Another union this government has attacked. The teachers union, the AAU, the teachers union, the independent teachers union, they have stood in this place in question time and in other debates and dared to attack teachers and their union for saying, I give a gonski and we want to see more funding in our schools. More funding in our schools, a measure and reform that would not just make teaching easier by having the resources to support students but helping every single school student in this country. So, Deputy Speaker, when they stand here and say that they're standing up for good unions, name the unions you think are good unions, because every single day this government will come in here and demonise another union and another group of union members for advocating for the rights of their members, but more importantly, for the rights of Australians and for quality issues like early childhood education, like funding for our schools. Another union that's been attacked in this place is the nurses' union. The nurses' union. People who make sure if we're sick and in hospital, we get the help we need. They've attacked the ANF for standing up and saying that they support PPL. They, they want to see the current pay parental leave scheme continued. 
another union that this government has attacked for standing up against bad government policy where this government wants to cut the amount of support that mothers have, new mothers have with their, with their newborn babies. Another union this government has attacked time and time again, the TWU, the Transport Workers Union and our truck drivers, who have the most unsafe workplace in the country, our Australian roads. If you work in the trucking industry, you're more likely than any other industry to have a workplace injury or death. Our roads aren't as safe as they need to be. So this government, through their reviews in this place, have attacked reforms that the TWU have pushed for in their safe rates campaign. The safety remuneration tribunal that was set up under the previous government through the acting lobbying of industry and the union involved, the TWU, this government has attacked them at any chance they've got to say that that was just a union campaign to support their union mates. Wrong. It was about road safety. This government decided to attack that union. This government attacks the MUA. In fact, they'll bring up the MUA a number of times in this debate. The MUA, who purely and simply want there to be shipping jobs in this country, maritime jobs in this country. MUA who stand up and say, we want our industry to exist in Australia. We want the industry to employ Australians. This government seeks to attack that union, whether it be our childcare workers, whether it be our teachers, whether it be our nurses, whether it be our ambos, our truck drivers, whether it be our construction workers, people who work really hard in hospitality, people who work really hard in manufacturing. This government seeks to attack them because they are the union. At the end of the day, a union is a group of workers coming together to have a collective voice and say in their workplace and their industry. So, Despite the rhetoric of this government saying that this is about supporting good unions, they will stand up here day and day again and rip down every union that exists in this country. To the extent that they rip down the AMA when the AMA stands up and says that they're opposed to a GP tax. This government's rhetoric does not match its own rhetoric, Deputy Speaker. If they are serious about supporting unions, they would not be putting this bill forward. They would not spend time and time again in question time, time and time again in this House and the other place, attacking unions. Why do they attack unions, Deputy Speaker? Well, a clear case to um, a clear example of why. One of the reasons why I believe this government spends so much time attacking unions, one example which I think highlights and goes to the heart of who this government is and who they're really trying to, rep to protect, is a case involving the CFMEU and temporary workers. The CFMEU exposed, going on in Melbourne, that there was a case um, where people who were here on 457 visas and the subclass of 407 visas, uh, that workers here on those visas working for a particular construction company were being underpaid. They were being underpaid and paid as little as $4 an hour. The CFMEU engaged the Fair Work Ombudsman to basically start investigating this case of worker exploitation on a subclass of visa within a workplace here in Australia. The Fair Work Ombudsman thus far has um, recovered $400,000 $400, in back pay. So the CFMEU was right. These workers were being underpaid. The Fair Work Ombudsman has been investigating and ordered the company to pay at least $440,000 in back pay. Yet what this What's happened since is because the CFMEU was a good union, as this government says they're here to stand up for, because they investigated, because they um, advocated, because they got the Fair Work Ombudsman involved to help clean up this clear case of worker exploitation, what happened? They were investigated by the Building and Construction Commission inspection, asking why, where their right of entry was. Did they enter the workplace appropriately? So what this government is doing is, rather than supporting the good unions, the good union officials that are doing their work of exposing the exploitation going on in some of our workplaces, they send in the building and cons construction, the Fair Work Building and Construction Inspector. They try and push through the ABCC in this house 
which only seeks not to investigate the worker exploitation going on in the construction industry, only seeks to investigate union organisers, the good union people that this government claimed that they represent. So why are they so interested in this particular case? Why in all of the worker visa exploitation cases that we are seeing day in day again being exposed in the media? Perhaps because the company, the company Deputy Speaker, who's been involved in this particular case, who's been ordered to pay back money, ordered by the Fair Work Ombudsman to pay back money, who's been found guilty of exploiting people here in temporary workers, in fact are donors, are major supporters of the Australian Liberal Party, Deputy Speaker. The company at fault in this particular case are donors. $400,000 to the Liberal Party was donated in the most recent AEC disclosures. No wonder the Acting Minister for Employment in this place stands up in question time and has a go at the CFMEU. No wonder in the other place they move motions condemning the CFMEU and the organisers involved in this particular case. They're protecting their own back because this particular company that's been found guilty of ripping off workers is in fact a Liberal Party donor. Deputy Speaker, it's not the first time that this has been exposed. There's a real reason why this government seeks to shut down the union movement and seeks to silence them, seeks to tie them up in red tape and have a go at them. Because they expose, they expose what this Liberal Party is really about. What is going on in our workplaces at the moment needs to be the focus of this government. Yeah, this right. government has turned its back on what is going on in some of Australia's largest workplaces. This government is not taking seriously the um, exploitation that is going on with temporary workers in this country. As I have said, where is the Royal Commission into the worker exploitation going on in some of our workplaces? Where is the investigation going on into the modern slavery that's occurring in some of our workplaces? People who've come here under good faith to work here, to take a gap year from their home country, to come here as a migrant worker on a 457 visa or on a 417 visa, and rather than getting the same wages and conditions as Australian workers, time and time again we have found out that they are used as a cheap slave labour going in and undercutting the conditions of Australian workplaces. And it's not just the CFMEU example that I've got here. There are examples at the farm gate that have been exposed in the Australian media and being investigated by the Fair Work Ombudsman. There are, in, there are instances on our farms, Deputy Speaker. There are instances in manufacturing, Deputy Speaker. In the poultry industry, it's particularly bad, whether it be Bayada Chicken Factory or Hazel Deans in my own electorate. There are problems in the meatwork industry, Deputy Speaker. There are problems in the construction industry, Deputy Speaker. There are problems in the cleaning and the security industry, Deputy Deputy Speaker, where we are seeing time and time again the exploitation of foreign workers being exposed. And the first people to speak up for those workers are the unions, are the union officials and the union members, members who are outraged about the exploitation that is occurring in these workplaces. Yet rather than working with the unions, the good unions that this government claims that they're here today supporting, they demonise they call them thugs. They say that they're intimidating. They say they're only interested in their self-interest when it couldn't be further from the truth. What we are seeing going on in our workplaces is the real battle that this government should be looking at. They should not be engaging in royal commissions that try to go after and shame and slam a few individuals. They should be going after the employers and the subcontractors that use the current situation to exploit temporary workers. Deputy Speaker, when it comes to bashing unions, when it comes to demonising their opposition, this Prime Minister has form. And we know that from what he did when he was the employment minister and the things that he used to say in the, um, in the, in the media when he used to say that um, unions engaged in industrial and economic sabotage, that the unions um, were the ones that were militant and bringing the country to its knees. 
If he was serious, then drop the rhetoric that you've got your members here standing up and saying that you're here to support good unions. Deputy Speaker, the government needs to drop the act that they're standing up for working people and drop the act that they're standing up for good union officials, because they fail every day to stand up and congratulate the work of good unions. Here, here.